Hello Youtubers! As you may know from the unboxing video that appeared on my channel, I've been testing the Jayu S3 for the past few days. The device has a very modified Android software with a ton of features, what is actually quite characteristic for smartphones from China. In this video I'll walk you through all of its features. On boot you'll be welcomed by a booting animation from the manufacturer and the home screen. The device runs on Android 4.4.4 KitKat out of the box with modifications from Jiayu. The list of available languages is very long. Software updates come either via OTA or we can also install an update from a local file. What is quite interesting is that the device comes with root privileges and in security settings you'll find the super user app that lets you control what apps have access. The device has 16GB of built-in memory and about 13GB available to the user. The rest is used up by the system partition. Let's begin from the launcher app. When you long press anywhere on an empty space on the screen, you'll be taken to home screen settings. Here you can select one of the screen transition effects, choose one of the pre-installed wallpapers or add a widget to the home screen. There are two special widgets for music and photos available that take up a whole screen. The music one lets you play music once you place the needle on the record. Depending on where you place it, the track will be played from that part. The camera widget lets you quickly take photographs with a Polaroid-like frame. Once you swipe from the top of the screen, you'll be taken to the notification panel. Swipe with two fingers and quick toggles will appear. You can of course rearrange the toggles and change the number displayed. In the recent apps menu that you can open either by double tapping or long pressing the home button depending on which option you select in settings, you will find information about the amount of RAM being used by each app open in the background. The phone comes with all of the standard Google apps pre-installed and additionally a few from Jai. On the list of apps we have the calculator, an app to make backups of your files, a simple radio FM app, quite limited file manager with basic functions, an app with themes for personalization that I'm going to present in a minute, a torch, and a gallery with video previews. Additionally, there is a music player with equalizer. The app list is actually quite short for a device from China, but that's rather good news, as we don't have unnecessary bloatware. Let's now talk about the ways to personalize the phone. On the list of apps we have themes which let you quickly change the look of the system. There are 9 themes to choose from. Each one not only changes the icons and the wallpaper, but also other elements of the interface such as the menus. The themes are rather pretty and I think that everyone should find one they find attractive. There are also a few wallpapers that come pre-installed on the device and we have an option to customize the lock screen. Just go to security settings and in lock screen select the variety unlock. Here you'll find various interesting lock screens such as for example one that resembles that from LG devices or the one from the Galaxy S5. In display settings there is also an option to change the system font. In display settings you'll find a special option called mirror vision that is an advanced screen calibration tool. Here you'll find the standard and vivid display effect, as well as the user mode. When you select the last one and slide from the left side, you'll be given options to adjust the contrast, brightness and hue of the displayed colors, as well as choose the dynamic contrast option. It's actually the first time that I see such advanced display adjusting settings on any mobile device. There is quite an extensive list of various gestures and shortcuts that can be found in the device. You can find the first set in the display settings. Here we have the drop zone option, which displays a tiny transparent icon with shortcuts to mini video, music and messages apps. This is actually nothing else than mini apps, similar to ones in Sony devices, which help in multitasking. Yet another long list of gestures can be found in the smart wake setting option. Here we have the very useful double tap to wake screen gesture and various other options such as draw a letter C to launch camera, draw a letter E to launch browser, draw a letter W to get to file manager or draw a letter M to get to music. Swipe to left or right can be used to change tracks and swipe up to unlock the device on lock screen. The device also has a feature called gesture sensing which reacts to movements above the display. 
You can use it to scroll through screens or home screen or pictures in the gallery. Now let's move on to the camera app, where there are also a few interesting and quite unique features. At first sight the app looks quite standard. There is a short arrow on the bottom of the screen that opens various filters, and on the top right corner we have quick settings and on the left of the screen the shooting modes. Besides the standard mode, here we have the picture-in-picture -picture mode, live photo mode that records a short video whilst taking a picture, motion tracking shooting mode, panorama mode and a very cool multi-angle shooting mode which takes a series of pictures and then displays them as an animation as you move the device. In settings we have the standard geolocation, an option to purify the face, change the exposure value, choose one of the multiple available scenes, adjust the white balance and the picture properties such as the sharpness, color intensity and brightness, as well as the anti-flicker option. In camera settings you can additionally set the hand gesture or smile detection shutter. The maximum resolution of photographs is 13 megapixels. In video settings we have the image stabilization, time-lapse video and resolution selection. The highest is the fine resolution at 1080p. Besides the already mentioned features, there is also the SIM management option in the smartphone. The device is dual SIM and what is quite interesting, both micro SIM slots support LTE. Next we have the scheduled on and off feature that lets you select a certain time when the device will automatically turn off and then a time for the device to turn on. In sound settings, there is a sound enhancement option for headphones, volume boost for the external speaker and the surround sound as well as lossless Bluetooth sharing setting. Lastly, in security settings we have the anti-theft feature that lets you set up a pin and choose trusted contacts to remotely lock and wipe the device in case of theft. As you have seen, the Jio smartphones are full of interesting features and have a lot of cool functions. Overall, the system seems to be very fast and stable. Soon you'll find a detailed review on my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.